Hey guys, I'm here, let's get technical. John Green, vlog brother and author of many best-selling books, has often said that books' meanings belong to their readers. The reading experience would be equally rich with or without authorial intent. But sometimes, readers, or in today's case, listeners, miss the point entirely. And there's no better example of that than Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA. Born in the USA is one of musician Bruce Springsteen's most successful songs. It called the Billboard Hot 100 home for 17 weeks, ranked number 9 at its best, and it's on the Rolling Stones' esteemed 500 greatest songs of all time. The eponymous album it's on has sold over 30 million copies to date. And not to mention, it was one of the many songs my dad and I danced to when I was a wee little toddler, along with Waiting on a Sunny Day, Into the Fire, and probably most common for us, Pony Boy. But Born in the USA is Bruce's most misused and misinterpreted song, and arguably it's one of the most misinterpreted songs of all time. Today, we'll examine this misinterpretation by looking at Born in the USA and its impacts on politics, popular culture, and the world. The year is 1981, and writer-director Paul Schrader approaches Bruce to write a song for his upcoming movie, Light of Day. Flipping through his notebook, Bruce finds some lyrics about the Vietnam War. These lyrics were inspired by Ron Kovic, someone Bruce met and admired after reading Ron's book, Born on the Fourth of July, a book about a Vietnam War vet. He then combined those lyrics with the words Born in the USA, something he found on the cover of the Light of Day script, to get his first draft of the song. But soon, Bruce realized that the song was too good to give away. Side note here, Bruce thanks Paul Schrader in the album notes of Born in the USA. Anywho, a lot of people think that the song is about the greatness of America and the nationalism that comes along with that because of the song's title lyric, Born in the USA, repeated quite loudly 14 times throughout the entire song. This is no mistake, by the way, it's meant to aesthetically and metaphorically drown out everything else. A closer look at the lyrics, however, reveal that the song isn't actually about hyperpatriotism, but about a Vietnam War vet and blue-collar working-class America. In the first verse, the song is set up, telling the protagonist's experience in America. In the second verse, the protagonist describes getting into a little hometown jam, something that indicates the state of the draft during the Vietnam War. See, the Vietnam draft is particularly notable because there became more and more exemptions and special rules, like if you were doing well in school, you didn't have to go away to the military. The special rule we care about, though, is military admittance because of violence. People who got into fights or committed crimes were fast-tracked to be in the military. Thus, when the born in the USA protagonist gets into a little fight or hometown jam, he was hastily sent off to Vietnam. Verses 3 to 5 describe the protagonist's experience coming back to America. Vietnam vets were famously hated when they returned from the war. Around the time of the war, hatred of the military began drastically increasing with the uprise of hippie culture and various other liberal movements. Thus, it made sense that people who disliked the war would dislike the vets. Keep in mind, the major war the United States was involved in before Vietnam was World War II, and the people who fought in that war came back as heroes. They were the ones who defeated the Nazis, after all. But the Vietnam vets didn't experience the same love. And even despite all of this, people just didn't pick up on the song. Some of those people include journalists. There are many examples of the media drastically misinterpreting Born in the USA, but today let's look at George Will's article, Nothing Like Being Born in the USA. George Will, author and conservative commentator, was invited to a Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band concert by Max Weinberg, longtime drummer for the E Street Band. After the show, on Thursday, September 13th, 1984, George published his thoughts on Born in the USA and Bruce, writing lines like, There's not a smidgen of androgyny in Bruce Springsteen who, rocking around the stage in a t-shirt and headband, resembles Robert De Niro in the combat scenes of The Deer Hunter. I have not got a clue about Springsteen's politics, if any, but flags get waved at his concert while he sings songs about hard times. He is no whiner, and the recitation of closed factories and other problems always seem punctuated by a grand, cheerful affirmation, born in the USA. And the last line of the article, there still is nothing quite like being born in the USA. George Will even left halfway through the concert. Max Weinberg, unsurprisingly, was very embarrassed with the release of the article, which Peter Ames Carlin writes about in his Bruce Springsteen biography titled Bruce. He hadn't known that Will intended to write about the concert, let alone transform Bruce into a character in Iron Rand's libertarian Atlas Shrugged. And while Bruce never mentioned it to him in one way or another, the drummer felt a distinct chill backstage when he got to the next show. Just a week later, someone else misinterpreted Born in the USA, and it wasn't our journalist this time. 
it was one of the most famous politicians in American history. To tell us more, here's Matt from Conjecture. Hi, Matt! Hey, Alex! Matt and I are both huge, huge Bruce fans, so he's here to tell us more. Take it away! Thanks, man. We're also both really good at writing transitions. Anyway, Born in the USA has been misinterpreted by people and critics alike, but probably the most interesting and famous case of misinterpretation was by President Ronald Reagan. So that George Will guy Alex talked about a second ago, he was connected to Reagan, and probably told Reagan something about Bruce because on Reagan's 1984 re-election campaign, he said this. America's future rests in a thousand dreams inside your hearts. It rests in the message of hope in songs of a man so many young Americans admire, New Jersey's own Bruce Springsteen. As we've mentioned, and I hope you understand by now, that's not what Born in the USA is about. In fact, during a later interview, Bruce even said that the song's narrator longs to strip away Reagan's image of America. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Bruce has campaigned for Democratic Party nominees over the years, including Kerry, Obama, and Hillary, though he does prefer to stay on the sidelines. According to Bruce, the artist is supposed to be the canary in the cage. Later on in that same press conference speaking about his politics, Bruce simply said that he has spent his life judging the distance between American reality and the American dream. And that right there is the real message, the heart behind Born in the USA and so many of Bruce's other songs. Yes, Born in the USA does focus on the experiences of a returning Vietnam vet, but it's so much more. It's a saga, a protest song documenting the struggles of the American middle class. In Bruce's own words, the working class was experiencing a spiritual crisis in which man is left lost. It's like he has nothing left to tie him into society anymore. He's isolated from the government, isolated from his job, isolated from his family, when you get to the point where nothing makes sense. And we see this all throughout the lyrics of the song. The protagonist is born into a town with no prospects, a town where growing up is tough and grueling, he is whisked away from his family to fight in a war he doesn't want to, he comes back home and can't find any work, and can't get any help from his government, which is supposed to help veterans, and then his brother dies in the war. At the end of it all, the only things he can see are the prison where he might wind up and the refinery that won't employ him. After all this time, the working man has nowhere to run and nowhere to go. The protagonist of Born in the USA is simply out of options as he looks at an America where he does not belong. Now here's what makes this song so powerful. The verses describe all this in plain detail, and yet what do we think of when we hear this song? Like countless reviewers and Ronald Reagan himself, we instinctively feel pride because that awesome, booming, nationalistic chorus drowns out the verse, the harsh realities of life that Vietnam veterans and working class Americans experienced. Of course it doesn't matter if you're totally isolated and nothing makes sense, you were born in the USA. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of the most misinterpreted song of all time. Thanks for watching DFTBA and Explore On. Short. Why would Reagan be playing born in the USA? It's about Vietnam. Giveaway! It is time for a giveaway. I'm going to give away this copy of Peter Ames Carlin's Bruce biography titled Bruce. And this copy is signed by me, which probably decreases the value, but at least you know that this is the official book and you're an official person, awesome person, awesome person. Congratulations, awesome person. All you have to do to enter is one, subscribe to Technicality, two, like this video, and three, leave a comment down below. I will randomly pick someone um, and I will announce it next video. Anyways, I want to give a huge thank you to Matt Mignogna, which sounds like filet mignon yeah, for working with me on this video, for being over here on Technicality, and being an overall awesome person. We both love Bruce a lot, obviously. Matt guest starred on the Epic Rap Battles video, so you might know him from there. And on top of him being in this video, I am over on his channel, Conjecture. I was on a Things I Should Have Learned in School video. It is really amazing, super fun. Check it out, and also subscribe to Conjecture while you're at it. Also, people who subscribe to Conjecture, like the Things I Should Have Learned in School video, and leave a comment on that video, get another entry to win this book. So, a little bit more incentive. If you like what I do, or just like having your mind blown, Matt makes truly fascinating videos. So, sub to him, so to me, goodbye. See you guys.